Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Rooted Latinas. Raices Latinas. What up, y'all? Hey. Good. <laughs> it's, it's bright in here. I know. It's because yeah. our future's Beach bright. Lights. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. It is pretty bright outside, too, though. I'm not yeah, gonna we didn't get the memo. Yeah, we didn't get the memo. That's okay. La próxima. Next time. Next time. Yes, yes. Next time for sure. Well, I'm super excited because today we get to find out all about one of our rooted Latinas. Mariana Hernandez. Well, hold on. You, you you forgot the middle name. Mariana Saraí oh, Hernandez. Ouch. Dang. I was thinking Araceli for some reason. Is one of you Araceli? I look like Araceli. Uh, oh. Maybe. <laughs> Mariana's like, I don't know if I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're excited to hear about you today, girl. Girl, I'm excited to share my story, and it'll be a little bit of um, motivation um, and just, I don't know. I, I want to relate a good message to everybody, so I hope everyone enjoys it. Good. I'm really excited for people to get to know you because you are very special. Yes. Oh, thanks, girl. So of let's course. get started. <laughs> so I know we've started traditionally with the first question. Jamie, you've been asking that question. Mm-hmm. What rooted you? Yes. <laughs> she almost forgot. Did you see that? <laughs> She's, She's like, like, hold on, I'm going to call that. Wait, I've been asking a lot. That's <laughs> What I rooted you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What made you Mariana? Yeah. Um, so I, I want to start from the beginning, I guess, essentially how I came to Iowa. Yeah. I was Tell two it. years old. So I always say, ni so de aquí, ni so de allá. Yes. Um, but I think it's similar to Rocio's story. My dad came first. He immigrated first and then just got himself established, got a job. And from there, my mom brought all of us. Where was your dad from? El DF. Mm. Is your mom from El DF too? No, she's from San Luis Potosí. Ooh, oh, I really love close. it there. Yeah, she's from she's from she's from un rancho, un rancho. Un rancho. Yeah, so um, I always like to hear her her stories because I'm like, yeah, I imagine myself in the rancho, but then I don't because I, mm. I mean, I, I've. I didn't. I wasn't raised in Mexico, right? So, mm-hmm. I'm a city girl at heart. Yeah, <laughs> city girl, uh, one, <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah. So I came here when I was two. Um, I'm one of five siblings. So I'm middle child because I have two older brothers, and then it's me, and then my brother and sister. Okay. Yeah. Did you <clears throat> just out of curiosity, being a middle child? I'm a middle child. I don't know if any ladies are too. Do you feel any difference as a middle child in seeing your siblings being older or younger than you and what that means to you and how you got rooted? Um, I feel just like the name in a sense, I'm the middle of everything, like the middle of arguments and, the, <laughs> the you know, the mediator sometimes. So, um, yeah, I think I think that that really has – because I have my older brothers, right? Yeah. And then – being the woman, it's almost like I bring a little softer, um, nurturing side of me. So I don't know. I, ca- I like to call myself the mediator of the family in a sense. But Heck yes. yeah, so we I actually so when we so the reason why we ended up in Iowa was because one of my uncles lived here or he does still live here. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how we just got to Iowa. But we we got into Houston, Texas, I believe, or Brownsville, I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. Brownsville, and then we came to Iowa. And what, oh, go ahead, Maria. I was just going to say, add to, wait, so were you born here, or? No. No, so I was born in El DF. Okay. Una una colonia pequeña que se llama Ecatepec. Okay. Ecatepec, Mexico, yeah. So I was two, so I don't remember anything. Like, I have no memory other than una prima que se llama Chema. And then I remember just I having that. several, like, puppies Aww. and cats. Aww. That's and how cats. I remember. Like, I don't know why that's a core memory, which yeah. is really random. That's Chema's real name. Because um, <laughs> that sounds That's so off a show. Like, yeah. Really? Um, oh, my gosh. Girl, I just lost her I name. I think in the, like, Latino, or at least in my family, in the Hispanic household, like, we don't even know their real names. We just yeah, know right? them by nicknames. La Polo. La Chona. Right. Jeez, I have to get back to you. Do you have one? Un apodo? Un apodo. 
Um, just Sara. My Sada. family calls me Sara. Huh. And when they're really angry, they call me my full name. Really? Mariana Sarai Hernandez. Oh, I was snaps. Like, oh, snap. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about later on when we call her Sarai. Right. Uh, Sara. <laughs> her alter ego. Her yes. alter ego, yes. <laughs> that was so funny. So then, okay, so you were, your dad came first, and then you guys came later. Was that a far, like, a long time before you guys came over or what was that journey like that you remember from actually getting here to Des Moines? I don't like I have no memory at all just from like the stories that my mom tells us she she swam the Rio Grande oh my god and then my siblings and I were actually um drove like we drove to the border yeah yeah to the border so um so we just met up my took mom different routes but yes same timeline like mm-hmm. yeah different routes same Why? timeline why I think it work out that way. You know, that's a good question. I'm not sure why. I think it. I think my mom was just more of protecting, mm-hmm. because I've heard that the Rio Grande is really crazy to cross. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, I don't. I really don't. I mean, the o- the earliest memories I have is just when we got here. We didn't have. Well, as I got older, right? We didn't have. We stayed in my uncle's house with all my primos and primas. So we were all a little crowded. And then from there, we just lived in like an apartment and rented out an apartment um, until until my parents saved a good chunk of cash to buy a house. How many people were living with you? So my uncle has, I want to say seven kids. Dang. And then him and his wife. And then us. And we're like seven, too. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was pretty crowded. But yeah. like the, uh, what is that show? The, Bra- Bra- the Brady, Brady Bunch? Bunch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, yeah. Latino style. Latino <laughs> style, right. And that's very common back in the days. Yeah. yeah. There was many people in there. They were house hacking without even knowing right. it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, still yeah. happening. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. We just have grown it. I know. Yeah, but I remember when we got when we got the house, it was on Fourth and what is that? Forest. Mm -hmm. Fourth and Forest. It was a blue house. On the north side? Yes. Yep. How long did you live there? I was like, I know that house Mm now. I sold it. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Until my middle school. (laughs) Until my middle school. Really? Yeah. I went to Harding. Until my middle school, yeah. I mean, I had a pretty, pretty chill childhood, I'd say. Nothing really that stood out, you know, that I can think of right now, at least. But I remember just, we always played on the streets. That was the thing, like baseball, kickball. We had a tree be, uh, on uh, next to our house that we would always climb. So that was fun. <coughs> Sorry. I was going to ask you, so you've always been active pretty much then? Because I remember, like, nowadays, Los Niños, at least I think about my baby, I don't let him out play in the streets or anything because times have changed. Yes. And I know, like, time to go to go back home was when the street lights turned on and yep. I better be home. Was that kind of your childhood experience or yes. tell us more? Yes, that is, ex- that is exactly how I grew up. Yeah. My mom was very overprotective of us. Mm-hmm. So I had to be home right after school and in la casa, in la casa. And so we had friends actually on both streets, mm-hmm. both sides of the street. So we would always play outside and, you know, okay. and just have a good time, mm-hmm. as ch- you know, as children should. Yes, so as they should. Yeah. Did you hang out with your siblings a lot? Or what was like the age difference between all of you guys? Ooh. So, yeah, I think for the most part, we do get along very well. We have very different personalities, like very different mm-hmm. personalities. Um, we got a well, we got well. I remember though, before my two younger siblings were born, I used to like parade because I was the. Keep in mind, it was my two older brothers and then me. Mm. So from my second oldest brother, we're three three years apart. Pero yo como era la única niña, I was always a loner. Mm. Always a loner. So I would play with. I was a Barbie girl, so like. I used to play with Barbies and like their little cars and dress up and stuff. I was a very that's why you're girl. so stylish still to this <laughs> day. <laughs> that makes sense. You think so? Yeah. Yes, I know so. Even your whole fit today. What do you mean? 
on point. Hang your nails. Hey. <laughs> Show them nails, guys. <laughs> Talk with your hands. Right. <laughs> Um, so what's next? So, you know, you yeah. said you had a kind of a chill childhood. Yeah. What, what would you say or has really made who you are today, Mariana? And how do we get to who you are today? So, okay, let's see. So I went to Harding Middle School. From there, it so was. Like Harding shaped me. No, I was right. Yeah. Harding was crazy. But anyways, that's another time for another story. Um, Girl, I was going to say, like, when people would say they went to Harding or Hyatt, it was like the bad kids. It was. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, At least that was. Our, class, our yeah. class is very, um, our even. class is really bad. Really? Up to. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we go to, we go to middle school up to eighth grade, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that old, old guys. How old are you? Right. <laughs> I'm old. That, I'm, old that, I'm, I'm really old. Anyways, I'm just kidding. No, but okay, so after middle school, so I went to North. And that was when we would get, be getting ready for, you know, going into high school. And I don't know if you guys remember, but that was a very scary, not scary, but very intimidating, like, transition going from middle school to high school, mm -hmm. at least for me. Because you would hear a lot of stories, or at least I would hear a lot of stories and I remember that I, w I had, I was a little nerd back then. I mean, I would read books. Yeah, I was a little nerd. Like Rosiel nerd? Or mm, I, I think I was less of a nerd than Rosiel. <laughs> I was a little less okay. of a nerd. Uh, but I grew up with, like, my mom telling me education's very important. Like, education, 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 right? And when I got into high school, I didn't find out that I was, I wasn't able to go to college until I was going into my ninth grade. What do you mean by that? So, because, you know, aspirations and, you know, your parent, my parents instilled, like, education. You have to go to college, right? Like, go to go to school, and then you go to college, you know. So, that mm -hmm. was my, at least that was my, like, plan. Yeah. And when I got, I think I got through, like, ninth grade. No, sorry, let me think back. So, my mom would say, you know, yeah, échale ganas a los estudios. But unfortunately, you won't be able to go to college. Is what she told you? Yes. Why did she say that? Well, because, you know, I didn't have documentation. Okay. So back then, I wasn't able to apply for FAFSA or, you know, take mm -hmm. advantage of the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And because my brother was three years older than me, he was going through, I guess, a very similar story where he had big aspirations. He wanted to go to college. And then I think it was up to junior or sophomore year that he was in sophomore and I was, I think, starting a freshman. Algo mm así. -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Science Bound was a thing oh, back yeah, then. Oh, yeah, I remember Science Bound. So he, it's a full ride to Iowa State. Oh, the MVP award? No. No, that's, that's different. different. That's different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So through Science Bound with him, there was a little bit of like, at the end of the tunnel, for me at least, because he was able to go through it. He did the whole program up and because I think it's you can do it throughout the whole your whole four years of college yeah. or high, high school. school. And he he got to senior, and I was I think I was I started into a freshman, and he they told him like you 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 will be able to go. So that was like a huge and you know, como se dice, light at the end of the tunnel yeah, for me. Yeah, absolutely. That hope, that right? Was, yes, exactly. So he graduated, and then I was kind of stepping behind him. And it's funny because my brother was a bigger nerd than me, mm -hmm. so it was almost like stepping into his shadow, because mm -hmm. all his teachers only knew me by oh, Ricky's oh, yeah. sister. So, anyways, he graduated from high school and he started Iowa State. So he graduated from uh, being an engineer. So as I saw, I was stepping into high school. That was a little bit of like that that hope, right? And so I I did it. I mean, I continued to study hard and and just do do good, you know, in a sense, like my parents wanted me to. How did you feel when you talk about that? I I can't help but think about like you already having like a vision for your life like this is what you're gonna do and you know our parents instill in us like you have to do good in school you graduate from high school you go to college like for someone to be like wait right like that's mm -hmm. not gonna happen 
Like, how did you, like, what did your mind, what went through your mind of like, shoot, now what? What do I do? I, I think exactly that. I was just like, what the heck? Like, why am yeah. I working so hard? Yeah. Right. When you don't, would I didn't know what was, like, you know, what, what was going to happen, right. I guess, in this end. So, but, you know, the good thing is that the hope was there. Yeah. So I think it was more of like an emotional roller coaster yeah. uh, for me during the high school years. But I was very involved in high school. I did soccer. I did country, country key club. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of key, key club. club too. Yes. Uh, signs bound. So Parties. I tried to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to, you know, be as involved as I as I could. Mm-hmm. And fast forward. My senior year, I slacked. I can be very honest. Like I, what I slacked. Let's talk what does about that. that? Mean? Yeah, right. let's talk about that. Yeah, I slacked. <laughs> um, I think I was still very involved. Uh, I think it was more of like feeling the emotions of like, oh my gosh, like it's la- the last year. Um, Senioritis. Yes, mm-hmm. is that what you call it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember those. You remember those? Heck yeah, yeah. So. And then in senior year, you don't take as much, you don't take a full day. At least I did it. So you were done with certain classes and you were able to, you know, kind of leave. Um, but yeah, so I did Science Bound throughout. And then, so I, right before I was going to start Iowa State, keep in mind that Iowa State is just engineering and science. Mm-hmm. And math. And math, yes. Um, it was one of those things that, like, I enjoyed biology Oh, you did? In writing, yes. Interesting. Uh, and what I wanted to do, actually, was criminal justice. Okay. Yeah, criminal justice. And so I had to pick something from the curriculum of... I remember seeing science. that list, girl. Yeah. How did you feel when... I know how I felt when my major career wasn't on there. How did you feel when you're like, where's criminal, right? like science and all of that in there? Because it wasn't. No, there wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so I was un, what do you call it when you're not, you don't know what to do? Undeclared, like, undecided. Undeclared, mm-hmm. undecided, yeah. For a really long time. I mean, you know, up until making that decision. So I took some, I took like a, um, it was like a program right before. So after high school, after you graduated, there's like a program that I was able to take, to take like the advanced classes or a, like a head start in a sense. So I was able to have a little bit of sense of being a college student Mm -hmm. with a group of other students, you know, around Iowa. That was very fun. I remember that. And I was still undeclared. I really enjoyed writing, though. So a lot of my, even throughout middle school and high school, I did a lot of writing, a lot of poetry. Cool. Yes, I still have the. I still have the. You should bring one. Oh I gosh, love no! To it's so it. cringy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's I was okay. just reading it through. I was like, <gasps> I was going through it. You want to see different faces of your life? <laughs> yeah, different faces of my life for sure. But it's really, it's very neat that I was, I had that kind of like, come on, so you say out, um, kind of like that out, mm-hmm. you know, writing and journaling. Oh yes, to express yourself. Yes. Yeah. How do you think writing has helped you today? Or that poetry that you used to take and do? Uh, I just ex- like it, like expressing myself on paper in a sense. And being just me, mm-hmm. really, without anyone else, like knowing what's going through my through my mind. So you sense. ended up going to Iowa State? Mm-hmm. Yep, so I ended up going to Iowa State, but it was for that program. For yeah. that. What for science fund. Fund. I didn't choose anything. So once it was almost over, because it was like, I think like three weeks or four weeks. And I was still undecided. I got a letter in the mail and I called that, hey, we need, you're on probation because I didn't hit that minimum GPA Mm -hmm. that you're supposed to hit in order to keep your scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I set that up. And at that time, I don't remember... Because I've been working all my life. I mean, from middle school, I was taking a job helping my mom. So I would go to school, and then I would go help my mom at night mm-hmm. cleaning a veterinary clinic. Mm-hmm. So she would pay me, like, a little cut from her check. Mm-hmm. And so up until then, um, I took several jobs, too, like waitressing. You know, any anything that didn't require, like, yeah, you know. So... 
you know. Y- y'all know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Yes. And so at the time when I had that little break, you know, so they called me in. And pretty much you have to, you have to say why you still want to be a part of it. Yes. Le- you got to go in front of teachers. Yes. Like, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You have to go with, you have to go. This was like three or four different people mm-hmm. of of Science Bound or the directors and, you know, just to pretty much hear your case. Like what happened and why you still deserve to, to get a scholarship. Mm-hmm. Right. And I remember leading up to it, I couldn't think of a reason. Damn. Why do you think that was? I'm I, curious. Yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to, like, bring back, like, the memory and stuff, but I think it was more of, like, I just didn't feel, you know, like that. Calling or that? Yeah, I, yeah, in a sense, yeah, like that calling, like, damn, is this really what I want? Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I told him. I was like, I don't know. Oh, shoot. So then what? So essentially, the dejamos bien. Like, I w- you know, they were like, hey, if you need time, like, that's okay. Come back to us. Y me acuerdo after I had to, like, sit down and, like, okay, what do I really want? Right. And, and that's it. So I finished uh, that program. And I still had, they were still giving me the opportunity But I didn't feel it. Like, I didn't feel it in my heart. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, my mom, well, my parents were struggling through the divorce Mm -hmm. financially because they paid all my, like, so it wasn't a full ride. They still had to cover some part of it. And my parents had mataron Mm -hmm. for my older, from, you know, my older brother to go through it. And for me, I was like, dang, I don't know if I want to put them through that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. thought about them first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just decided to work. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Oh. You think you'd change anything, like, looking back now? Yeah, I think. Uh, if, like, they sent you a letter, hey, you still have right. hands. No, they, they never. <laughs> did I remember? I don't think I was ever reached back now, but uh-huh. I think looking at back now is more of, like, I want, you, you always think of, like, what if. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? But. No, I think that at that time it was the right decision for me, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. In reflecting, Orita Mariana, and whoever is listening right now, I know traditionally many of our parents have always told us education, education, <laughs> education. Things are now changing and evolving with, you know, the world and what one can do. Maybe you were just a pioneer in all of this at the time, mm-hmm. right? Where you decided not to go with what? everyone else was telling you to do Mm -hmm. because everyone would judge you i felt at least hey you didn't go to college you didn't do this you didn't do that oh my goodness right now look everyone's like i'm not going to college i'm going to go straight into my business or i'm going to go develop and create something right and so i think at the time as i'm hearing you it's like follow follow inside what feels right and that's what you did is what i'm hearing you say yeah. And I think for anyone out there, I don't know if, if you would share any sentiments if they're, they're on that edge of, do I go to college? Do I not? Do I start this or do I not? I think, yeah, like, I think that was one of the biggest things for me. Like, we all have intuition, mm-hmm. whether we want to believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And we always try to go against that. And sometimes we got to listen to it mm-hmm. because they can definitely change the route or the outcome that mm-hmm. you know you are probably destined to do absolutely mm-hmm. i heard something and i learned a lot of this by you mariana too is like you know what feels right is kind of leaning towards your sole purpose of life mm-hmm. and i think about like hearing you say like your pensamientos cuando tuviste la decisión de seguir adelante o no and it was like your family first and making sure they're okay because i'm sure you saw all the struggles that went through them. And that's hard to explain to somebody <laughs> nowadays, like how like, you know, us rooted Latinas now have to go through those emotional like situations where you, we probably shouldn't have, you know, it would have mm. probably taken us a different route, but we're here today and we're taking advantage of the opportunities we have today. Mm-hmm. How do you think like that has helped you grow to the person you are today, those situations? 
I, I always like to say that your situation that you go through, or at least speaking for myself, that's not who you are meant to be. What do you mean? Yeah, for example, being an immigrant, right? Thankfully, I have DACA, so, you know, that's kind of like after, yeah, after high school, right? That's when DACA um, plus was born. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's more of like you create, you create it. Mm -hmm. And there's others, uh, there's other avenues, there's other ways to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, growing up as an immigrant is that, that's what I had to hold hold on for hope. Yes. yes. Absolutely. You're yeah. strong. We feel you. Yeah, we can feel the emotion. <laughs> yes. you know, like, Girl. Yeah. I, I feel like some of the things you're saying is like follow that purpose, that intuition. Have you always had that intuition? Did you know what intuition was at the time? Like how did that happen? Mm. How did that come along in your life? That's a very good question. Um, I want to say probably after high, eh, let me think, after high school, mm -hmm. after high, like between high school and up to like when I got DACA. Mm -hmm. I still remember when they announced DACA. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm getting a little choked up. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, because it's important, <laughs> girl. Yes. Yeah. And there's so many people going through that too, you know? Hell yeah. yeah. It yeah. shows like how much it means, you know, to somebody like someone, someone that didn't have to experience that, right? Like I was just born on the other side of this man-made <laughs> invisible line, right? That I was granted these docs, and so I didn't have to see all those things. For you, I'm hearing you. It's like that's a whole other life, a whole other lens of living life, and things that I, I, I at the time, I'll be honest with you, I. I knew a little bit from my siblings, but I didn't see it as I'm hearing you talk mm -hmm. about your story. Yeah. Well, and you're older too, so even if you know, right. they would have tried to explain things to you. I might have went. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but DACA has been. I mean, for what it is, right? Um, it has been awesome. Opened up a little bit of security as far as license and job opportunities and stuff. But so after high school, I I worked at a cell phone place. In sales, so I was actually one of their top sales. Hey, coincidence, of course. So I yeah. worked at. Um, <laughs> I was a sales rep for Boost Mobile. Oh yeah. I worked on the uh, Boost Mobile on Euclid and Southeast Fourteenth. Okay. Or yeah, yeah, it's a Southeast Fourteenth. Yeah. And that was so cool, like being able to sell phones, and I, I met a lot of the community there too, and. Just being able to be a little tech savvy, I guess, in the sense and sale. Something about sales mm -hmm. really got my like attention. Mm -hmm. And real estate was something that was a little bit, you know, brought up in my high school years. But I don't, I don't think that kind of took, came back full circle until I bought my house. Mm -hmm. But so with DACA, you know, I was able to get the job and stuff. Actually, no, it was midway. So I was working for the cell phone place for like two or three years, and, and then DACA came. And then I changed my status, quote, unquote. And from there, I was, I was like a workaholic. I mean, I was just working from sunup to sundown. I had no life. I still remember that. Mm -hmm. um, but closing out registers, managing other people, hiring, firing. I learned a lot. So it was really, it was really cool. And our boss was, it's un indio. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys ever had, like, that culture <laughs> in your life. But they think so different. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, uh, quote, unquote, my first business mentor in a sense. Because he really kind of took me under his wing. And, That's so cool. And taught me a couple of business things. But after that, I wanted more of a work-life balance so I got a job working at um, collections mm -hmm. and a nine-to-five office and I got my weekends um so I just always had that that grit that it says I got nuts and plus you know making my own money so I don't put that barrier on my parents too yeah, yeah. it 
because you like to shop. Yes, shopping is my thing. <laughs> Telling you <laughs> from back when yeah. you've already had style. Uh, yeah. Put that in the budget. Right, right. <laughs> really funny on that because it goes back to Man- Mariana's work ethic and, you know, how much she loves to hustle is we had brought up a situation where, like, we need a budget and we we got to cut some stuff. And I think we were just joking around. I'm like, girl, you're not going to be able to go shopping as much as you do. And she's like, no, I'm not going to cut that. I'm just going to make more money. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that is definitely a good mindset to have. (laughs) Find a way. There's more work out there, you know. So you were working in a corporate office pretty much, like nine to five. Uh, Yeah, I was there for five years. And then, so I bought my house when I was 23. Mm -hmm. Which is huge. Yeah. I actually closed after my birthday. Well, around Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I was 22 going to 23. Were you single or were you with the... I was... We were broken up. Okay. Yeah, so single. Yeah. I was single. Um, and so when... It's funny because I... Who was I talking to today about it? Uh, DACA. I mean, it was fresh. Like, I don't even think lenders knew what it was. At least my lender didn't know mm-hmm. what it was, you know. But I closed, hey. and I got money at uh, a closing, closing money table. At, at closing table. Hold on, was how do you do that? <laughs> were the requirements from when you remember buying like the same as now? Close yeah. I'm 33. Okay, so, so you've owned your home for ago. 10 years. Yeah. That's crazy. No, you said 23, girl. girl. 23. Wait, hang on. Hang yeah, on. Girl, Let me do math. She said 23. It's okay. 20. It's a long time. No, yeah. six years. I'm going into six years. Oh, okay, 24 okay. maybe. Okay. Yeah. What? Yeah, so I bought... <laughs> around there. S- around math, there. Math is hard. The <laughs> <laughs> writing, girl. She's good at writing She's in sales. Write. <laughs> She's good at writing her story. Dang, y'all calling me out. <laughs> How do you get into that That's science thing? That's right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll just stick to science. <laughs> You're like, gosh, Jeez, I got girl. you, girl. I got you. Right. <laughs> what made you want to buy a house? My dog. <laughs> Your dog? You know how real that is right Dude, now? That, in that year, yeah. it was like the number one reason why people would buy a house That's because of their I, dog. I literally bought my house for my dog. Like, it was just the yard that got me. And really? I was like, this is it. Put the offer in right <laughs> now. So anybody out there that has those pensamientos that they need to buy a house because of their dog, it's real. Yeah. Your fur babies count as a yes, baby too. Yes, I remember. I'm going to show you the picture, but I remember taking a picture at closing day with like my dog. <laughs> Lola? Luna? I, I was Luna. like, she said Lola. my dog loves That's the backyard. The <laughs> uh, Luna That's left awesome. the review. <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah, so after, so that was fun. That was really me independice un chingo. Mm, I don't know if I yeah. can say that, but yeah, you can. Me, me independice <laughs> un montón. Like it was, it was montón. really cool to to just be independent mm-hmm. yeah. and have a dog and you know live the best life. Um, and then after that, let me think. So leading up to now, soon after I said, so I bought my house, and that's kind of where it came for circle. That's that first full circle moment where. Mm-hmm. I started asking questions and real estate came up again. Mm-hmm. And so the realtor that helped me was actually the one who helped me answer those questions and kind of helped me, you know, along the way. So I just took the information and I just got it done and got licensed and then um, been doing real estate now for five years. So I think that's, that's um, it's amazing because I'm able to, to, help the community first mm-hmm. of all and then help like my family mm-hmm. in another sense mm-hmm. and on top of that break generational curses yes mm-hmm. why is that so important to you mariana <sighs> i know Gosh, at least <laughs> people no i love people want to know yes you guys want to know um i think it's just to be able to set a different future so i, I told you guys i have two younger siblings so not so they're U.S. citizens, so they were born here. Mm-hmm. So being able to show them that there is, there is more out there, mm-hmm. and you are able to do whatever the heck you want to do. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yes, you can. Si se puede. The yeah. definition of that, the all the things regardless that of you. Your <laughs> all the things, yes. <laughs> your status, it doesn't matter. Si le echas ganas. Yeah. There's always a way is what you I feel you have been able to show us that there can be yes. many different circumstances in your life, girl, no matter what they are. Pero si tú tienes esas ganas, 
and that work ethic, there's nothing that's going to stop you. And I know there's nothing going to stop you from what's mm-hmm. that, where you're absolutely. going. Yeah. And the combination yeah. of just being like a good human. Believe, and that's what I'm I saying. So much in that. Like, absolutely. You're a good person, like good shit's coming. Nobody can oh, ever yeah. take that away from you. Exactly. Me. Exactly. Yeah, that's that. You guys nailed it on, on right on the head. But now being a mother of two boys, it's like it's just so cool to see that it's yeah life changing. Yeah. When that. so you have two boys, tell us about them. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I have a four year old, soon to be five, <laughs> in November. Isn't that crazy? And then so it came shortly after you got the house. Wait, is he a Scorpio? <laughs> Is Juliana no. Scorpio? <laughs> yes, Juliana is more of a Scorpio kid. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm playing. And then Lorenzo is going to be to the end of this month. He's a cancer. Yes. Oh. I love it. Because Jaden and him, they're not too far apart on their birthdays. Oh, I yeah, know. that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, my boys are awesome. Who is Mariana now? Who is Mariana Saray Hernandez? Oh, wait. No, 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 no. No, that's Mariana right now. Yes. She ain't in trouble yet. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, right now, you know, being able to work alongside with my wonderful business partners and uh, growing something m- bigger than what, at least for me, I imagined. And just living life, enjoying the little moments, yes. enjoying my boys. Yes. And, and just putting me first. Yes. Uh, I really, really, really believe in that. In that when you put yourself first and you become your best self, you allow others to also show up as them, their best selves. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate that you are who you are because that allows me to be who I am in business and in this podcast and all of those things, girl. Because it does take someone strong and be courageous to do that. Any, yes. any final words for our listeners? Any final words? Let's see. I do want to make you happy. Yes. yes. Absolutely. I was going to say, what Don't advice do you have anyone for anyone out there? Or that you would tell your younger self, actually? Jeez, Maria, with you, though. I'm These sorry, are great questions. Know. Okay. Um, what I would tell to my younger self is follow your heart and your gut, your intuition. I love that. Yes. Girl. That's a wrap. Yes. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing your story. I know. I really appreciate it. And for the followers out there that want to follow you, what's your your handle? My handle. handle? Ooh. Okay. So Mariana S underscore Hernandez. And then um, Facebook, I'm just Mariana Hernandez. No (laughs) Sarai. No (laughs) Sarai. Oh, you know, let's end it with we only call her Sarai. When she straightens her hair, when she has straight hair, because oh. you look like a different person. Yes, yes. she looks, like she whole looks so different di- person. Whole other vibe. I do that all the time. Yes. My wife, my wife Next hates episode. It when I straighten my yes. Hair. Next yes. episode. Yes. So you're gonna be like, and our guest today is. Yes. <laughs> Sarai Hernandez. Can we get Sarai for uh, my episode? Mariana's. Oh, uh, yeah. Sarai is covering for Mariana. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to borrow someone straight. <laughs> I got you, girl. I'll, yeah, we'll go buy you one. <laughs> That's so funny. Thank awesome. you for Thank everyone that tuned in. Stay tuned for our next episode yes Yes. see y'all